So Larry Yard went on The Breakfast Club. So somebody hit me up and they said, Tim Black, man, cover this story for us, brother. Let me know what you think. So I'm covering it. In this video, I'm going to cover Larry Elder, and I'm going to debunk his nonsense. So Larry Elder likes telling this story about Obama. He says Obama was a part of a law firm that did a class action lawsuit. They lied and said that black people were being discriminated against when they weren't, and that black people just don't know how to pay their bills. That's why they don't get loans. They don't pay their bills. Here's a clip. This is not from The Breakfast Club, but it's the same story. Because Larry's been telling the same story about the same group of black people for the last 20 years. There was a young attorney named Barack Obama who joined with other attorneys to file a class action lawsuit against Citibank some years ago. Uh, and as a result of the class action lawsuit, the Citibank agreed to, uh, to grant mortgages to 186 people who had applied, turned down, and the, uh, and the applicants argued that they were turned down because they were black. Well, they got the loans, and virtually nobody was able to keep up with the loans. Many of them went into default, which indicated that the bank was not discriminating against these would-be black borrowers. Here's the truth about the story. It's bogus. It's from the Daily Caller, Ben Shapiro's paper, which I don't trust. And those people, ha, ah, it was three black people that took out, they'd already, had, they'd already had home loans. They wanted to refinance their homes. They already had good credit, Larry, because they already had homes. They were paying on their homes. According to the Daily Caller, these people, many of them defaulted. What's many, Larry? What's the number of people that's many? I don't know what many is. And I can't look it up because it's the Daily Caller. And they didn't publish the information. But you know, Larry, you know what I trust more than the Daily Caller, Larry? In your bogus story that makes black people look like garbage? I trust the Small Business Administration. And they did their own research. And in their research, they determined that black small businesses with fair credit pay higher interest rates than white small businesses with fair credit. And black small businesses with good credit pay higher interest rates than white small businesses with good credit. They also determined that black small businesses with excellent credit, guess what they do, Larry? They pay higher interest rates than white businesses with excellent credit. So I'm going to trust that a little bit more than you, Larry. And yes, systemic racism exists in lending. It also exists in business Venture capital. Over 97% of venture capitalist funds go to white guys. 97. And you know who gets the other 3%? Everybody else, Larry. But you already know this, Larry. That's also called systemic racism in the form of lending. That's venture capital and entrepreneurism. But you know who's the most entrepreneuristic people in the country? Black women. Followed by who? Black men. But Larry will never recite those types of statistics. Why? Because they don't play into the narrative. You know, the narrative that all the problems with the blacks are because the black people are not doing what they need to do. See, Larry is a conservative radio host. And conservative radio hosts, sort of like conservative YouTubers, make their money repeating white supremacist talking points to white people or the black people who don't read books. That's their thing. They think being a truth teller is throwing black people under the bus and telling black people hard truths about themselves like stop shooting each other. Stop breaking the law, black people. I hate crime just like anybody else, but here's the truth, man. In the 20s and 30s when white people were committing all the crime, they were broke. They didn't have good jobs. There were less opportunities. And then somebody said, hey, guess what? If we sell alcohol, we can make money. And then crime shot up. Why? Because there were poor white people who wanted to make some money. Some of them made a lot of money like the Kennedys. You may have heard of them. The grandson is running for president. And he's doing a lot better than Larry Elder. The same thing happens to black people. Black people who have lack of opportunity, lack of, lack of resources, they take advantage of what they have around them. I'm not saying it's good. I'm saying it's bad. And I'm saying it's what people do. But the only time it gets attributed to your color, your skin, is when you are black. Because when white people commit crimes, because they're down on their luck and they have no opportunities, no one goes, see, look at these white people. They go, look at this bad apple. This black sheep of the family. But Larry would never point that out because Larry is a conservative radio host who has to lie and tell white people what they want to hear, which is, Something wrong with black people. I don't know what's wrong with black people. We just need to do better. Or you say it like Larry, like something's wrong with black people and black people need to learn and black people don't, they don't take care of their kids and black people, they just, they just do a better job than black people and the black people and the black people and the black people and the black people and black people and black people and it's on and on and on and on and on and on and there's no truth in it, Larry. Another major part of the interview was that Larry does not believe that there's a thing called systemic racism. 
He doesn't believe there's environmental racism. You know, when they dump toxic crap in the water that gives us cancer and respiratory diseases. He doesn't believe that's a real thing. Though we know it's a real thing. There's studies on it. But not to Larry. No such thing as systemic racism. He doesn't believe it exists in education. Even though America didn't want black people to ever read or get an education. For hundreds of years, they outlawed us getting an education. And then when they had to give us an education, they did a thing where they had racially biased taxes. And they gave schools, white schools, lots of more money than black schools. So basically, they give the white kids $1,000 per child and give $100 per black kid. And who do you think got the better education? And whoever got the better education probably ended up with the better job. Even though there was so much employment discrimination, did it really matter? So we got this type of system set up. And then when, de and when desegregation came, they changed it and said, hey, guys, let's not no longer fund it by the states. Let's fund it by the local community or the tax bases. And the tax bases meant that black people would struggle still because black people were still subjected to lower tax base due to lower appraisals of their homes. Lower value homes give lower tax base, which means schools get underfunded. And once again, we end up with white kids getting $10,000 per student per year and black kids getting less than $1,000 per student per year. And we end up with what, Johnson? We end up with black kids with less resources, less books, sharing books, no computers, holes in the walls, bad water, no facilities, classes they don't have, music, art, extracurricular classes, going on field trips. Black people got none of that. All of that against them, and that's called discrimination in the form of education. But once again, Larry don't believe there's a thing called systemic racism. He says it's just black people don't want to learn, and they're not trying hard. So Larry's all talking points was there's no systemic racism, there's crime in the black community, and black people, it's all their fault, and black people are discriminated against. No, they're not. Black people just don't want to, black people just don't want to start businesses, and black people just won't, won't follow through. And everything is black, black, bigger than black, 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 the evil, evil, evil blacks. But here's something that Larry's lying ass should have mentioned. See, in the white community, in the white society, they had this thing called the white queen complex, the white angel complex. The, and it was that they wanted white women to stay at home. and They wouldn't get an education. They wouldn't be able to grow businesses. And those white women were walking, looking across town at the poor black women. And those black women were doing what? They were pursuing education. They were going after jobs and going out to opportunities and becoming entrepreneurs. And those white women said, ugh, I hate it. So those white women got very jealous. And those white women did things to hurt those black communities. And those white men were like wind up dolls and they went to destroy black communities. Communities like Tulsa, Oklahoma's Wall Street or Sweet Auburn in Atlanta and also in Nashville. Black thriving communities that had entrepreneurs. What happened to them? Larry Elder, they were destroyed by racist, white, jealous bigots who couldn't achieve, who had to destroy black communities. And what happens when you destroy a black business? The owner of that business can't pass it down to his child. And what does that mean? That child can't pass that business down to their child. And this happened over and over and over and over again to black community. I'm not saying it's an excuse for black people not to achieve, but why isn't that part of the story, Larry? Why are you only telling half the story, Larry? Why can't you be fully transparent to your audience? Oh, that's right, because Larry is a conservative radio host whose job is to keep his audience happy. And just like a lot of conservative YouTubers and people on TikTok, they don't want to tell the truth about what really happened in America or what happens in America because they want to eat off the same gravy train that Larry Elder's been eating off of, which is black people are derelicts. Black people don't achieve. And black people are their own worst enemy. And if you don't give them that, then those white people will get mad and they'll no longer pay your salary or buy your goods and your merch or make it so that you could run for president or governor or whatever and lose and lose big and lose badly Larry Elder because you deserve to see I got a problem with people that think keeping it real means throwing black people under the bus being real tough and telling real black people how real their problems are and how all those problems are really their own fault that's that keeping it real keeping it real is cracking a book and doing your own research and realizing yes systemic racism does exist it doesn't mean that black people can't achieve of course we can we have successful people throughout history that achieve but it's in spite of the roadblocks and the obstacles that have been set up against us. 
Yes, there are black people and white people in the start of disadvantaged situations. But guess what? White people never had their businesses destroyed by jealous black people who bombed their homes, who robbed their homes and flattened their businesses and then didn't even have to go to jail or form restitution. That never happened to white people. Only to black people. And what do you call somebody who won't tell history accurately and blames the victims for their own situation? See, black people didn't find themselves one day just wake up and they own only 2% of wealth in the country that they built for free against their own will. No, that happened because America made it so. And black people have been kicking and fighting and screaming and going against it ever since. From the inception, we've been fighting for ours and we've been trying to achieve. And how dare we have people like Larry Elder and those people that follow him that try to paint the narrative that black people have succumbed to something when we fight it every day. And those people that are successful, they are exceptions to the rule. And their achievements, does that mean that others didn't try? It means that others are still in the process of trying. And those others need our support, not the degrading false narratives of white supremacists. All right, guys, my name is Tim Black. If you want to follow this content, I suggest you do it now because you never know. We got sellouts like Larry Elder, and they're coming for me. Help me fight them off here on the Tim Black Show. It's a new day, even for the sellouts. Don't fall for the banana in the tailpipe. Don't be fooled by corporate media talking heads misleading the people. Get your news and information from an entity that keeps it real. Tim Black. Tim Black is the host of The Tim Black Show. Independent news that leaves you informed, inspired, and sometimes entertained, but always in the know. Go to TimBlackTV.com and sign up today. The Tim Black Show is news for people who can't stand the news. See you there.